Last week, I looked at this fantastic late 19th century dining table. This is a lovely piece of handmade furniture, hiding a bunch of fascinating surprises. For one thing, the table expands to an insane 10 feet long, and probably could have seated a dozen people. It's easy to get distracted by this expanding feature, but just as interesting are the drop leaves, which are held up by these beautifully crafted wooden hinges. I've never seen this sophisticated mechanism before, and right away, I knew that I had to build one. So, what do I know about Hinges. Here, I'll show you everything I know right now. Oh look, the hinges are here. Now I can finish that project. See, there, that's it. That's everything I know. But this is the internet, so I figure that pretty much makes me an expert. I have never given the mechanics of hinges very much thought, so this project is going to be a lot of troubleshooting and figuring things out just as much as it is the actual craftsmanship. But to build any joint like this, we need to start with wood that's really straight and square. I'm going to begin with this piece of cherry. It's a durable wood that's also easy to work, so it's perfect for experimenting with new joinery. I get the rough edge straightened out with my floor plane, and then switch over to my jointer. This is a replica of an 18th century jointer, made by a very talented fellow over in the UK. This plane's long sole makes it easy to get a straight edge. Once I get a continuous shaving, I'm ready to transfer that straight line over to the other edge. The standard tool for this is the traditional marking gauge, and it's okay for short distances, but I find them awkward for anything over a few inches. This is a good time to switch over to my fish head gauge. It's got a bigger fence that's easier to grip and rides more securely against the edge, especially for longer distances. I've got a whole set of plans so that you can build your own fish head gauge, and make sure you stick around to the end of the video where I've got a big announcement about plan sales. With my straight edge scribed to the other side of the board, I can quickly joint a parallel edge, cut my stock in half, and shoot both ends square. I'm taking a little extra time to carefully prepare my stock. This joint isn't going to work if the stock isn't flat and straight. This hinge is kind of like a box joint with five interlacing fingers. So I need to take those boards that I've prepared and divide them up really precisely into five equal sections. What tool should I use for that? Oh, oh, I bet it's the one called dividers. Dividing up a given space is often called stepping off. There's a bit of trial and error involved. You can tighten and loosen the adjuster until you can step off five divisions and have the tool's leg land exactly on the far edge of the work. Then you step off one final time, pressing hard each time the tool touches the wood. Sharp dividers will give you deep marks, and dropping the tip of your knife into those marks will let you bring in your square and turn those simple divisions into clear layout lines across both pieces. While the boards are together, I'm also going to pick one to be the stationary board and one to be the board that swings open. At this stage, I'm pretty much making a box joint, so I need to just pick alternating pieces of waste to remove. Before I cut, let's stop and look back at the original joint. You can see that the open half of the hinge is actually cut at an angle, which probably helps it close without hitting the other half. So after I've cut down my lines, I'll lay out an angle on the sides and saw out the exposed parts of the joint, and then chisel out the slope in this centerpiece. It doesn't take very long. And what I've just done makes no sense at all. I've cut that slope right at the tips of my box joint fingers, so there's no way for them to interlock with the other half of the joint. I go back and look at the original, and I realize it's got a regular box joint right up at the tip, and then that sloping section is lower down, which makes a lot more sense. So I need to cut away those angled sections and then recut them lower down. I'm not upset, I've made way bigger mistakes than this before. Pretty soon, I'm remaking my sloped sections beneath neatly formed finger joints, and this side is almost done. Now, on to the other side. I'll use a tenon saw to cut down to my baseline, but all the waste I want to remove is in between pieces that I want to keep. This is a great time to use my shop-made turning saw to take out most of the waste. It's got a super narrow blade that cuts quickly without crossing over into the stock I want to keep. Even the best saw will never give you a clean baseline, so I always leave a tiny bit of waste and chop that out with a small chisel. Now I need to actually fit the joints together. At first, they don't fit at all, but that's actually good news. Cutting the joint too tight 
means I can trim it and sneak up on a clean fit. I do this work in several rounds, just seeing where things are a little bit too fat and slowly paring off material until the joint slides together. Okay, we're making progress, but the joint still doesn't look quite right. Let's go back to the original. Looking at this joint, I expect to see a little gap where the moving section touches the stationary section, but the fit is really tight. I think there's actually a bit of an overlap where that slanted part sits on top of the other side of the joint. You can see the gap over here at the far right. I want to get rid of that and put a little bevel here so the parts can mate neatly together. I'll make that bevel with a dovetail saw and a bit of careful chiseling. Then, I also need the joint to be a bit deeper so the pieces can overlap at the tips. I saw down just a bit and then chisel out the waist one more time. The last step is to drill out for that pin, and that's honestly pretty tricky. I'm going a long distance with a narrow bit, and I can't let things wander. I've got the piece clamped securely to the end of my bench, and I've slid my wedding ring onto the bit. If the ring stays in place as I drill, then I know I'm parallel to the floor. I've also decided to go in from both sides to help cut down on error. There's no need for the two holes to meet in the middle as long as they're in line with one another. I can just use two short pins rather than a single long one. As soon as I install a temporary pin, I can see that the joint won't work the way it is. It starts to open, but the top edge of the moving section bottoms out inside the joint. After I study the original joint a little bit more, I realize that I need a bit more of a bevel on that front edge, and that's easy to cut with a chisel and clean up with a file. I can also cut away more of the floor of the joint, especially on the inside where no one will see. After a little more cleanup inside the joint, I'm ready to try the mechanism one more time, and this time, it slowly moves through the whole range of motion. The joint is creaky and stiff, but it works. After a bit more fiddling, the hinge actually works really smoothly. So, how do I like the final piece? Honestly, it's, it's not bad. It looks pretty cool, it works really quite well, um, it, it's not perfect, there's a couple tiny gaps that could be better, and I could have drilled those pins a little bit more straight, so there's a bit more resistance in the joint than I would want, but of course, that's why you practice stuff like this. I mean, I would hate to be trying to reverse engineer and cut this joint in the middle of a furniture project. That would be very high stress. It's much better to do new techniques like this just as practice far away from the stresses of turning out an actual piece. So if you've got an afternoon in the shop, try cutting something like this, just for fun. It's a good chance to learn without driving yourself crazy. And you know, while I was doing this piece, I used an awful lot of shop-made tools. I used my shooting board, my DIY turning saw, and of course, my fish head marking gauge. And I have plans for all of these, and almost all of my plans have been redrafted using Fusion 360 for a clean, professional look that is super easy to follow. And you know, the holidays are coming up, so I've decided to put all of my plans on sale for 50% off everything, including my big bundles. So go on over to rexkruger.com slash store and pick up all the plans you want for half off. Because you know, the thing about Christmas is that woodworkers, the people in our lives, they, they often don't know what we want. I'm, I'm really hoping for a new carcass saw for Christmas, but I'm probably gonna get, you know, slippers. So don't count on your family members to be psychic. Go and get yourself a little something, because you're the one who knows what you want. And I can't let a video go by without thanking my amazing patrons on Patreon. They are the ones who make these videos possible. And if you'd like to be one of them, go on over to patreon.com slash and check out all the rewards we have for the people in our fantastic community. I'll see you next week with another woodworking video. Thanks so much for watching.